and welcome back to the course of basic electrical engineering. In this today's lecture, I am going to continue with the unit 1 that is DC circuit. The topics that I am going to discuss in this today's lecture are node analysis and analy one example based on the node analysis and one example based on delta to star transformation. So let us start with the nodal analysis. I have already discussed about the Kirchhoff law. Kirchhoff current law and Kirchhoff voltage law. Kirchhoff current law is basically used for the nodal analysis. Nodal analysis is used to determine the voltage at different nodes in the given network, given circuit. Now, after determination of node voltage, we can easily determine all the branch current. Nodal analysis is simple as compared to the mass analysis. Now, let us start. Let us see which are the steps for nodal analysis of circuit. So step one is what? Identify all the nodes in the given network and mark all the nodes and assign corresponding name, corresponding node voltage name that is V1, V2, V3 and so on. So first task is identify the node and assigning the name to the node that is node voltage name that is V1, V2 and V3 and so on. Then mark all the branch current. Now, in the mass analysis, we have already discussed about the branch current and mass current. Branch current in the mass analysis, if one current is I1, current flowing in the other branch is I2, then current flowing in the third branch, I have taken as I1 minus I2. There are limitations on the number of unknowns in the mass analysis. But in the case of nodal analysis, there is no limitation. If one current, if input current is I1, then output current we can take as a I2 and I3. So, there is no limitation on number of unknowns in the case of nodal analysis. After marking the branch current, we have to apply KCL at each and every node and we have to write the equation of the current in form of V, I and R or conductance if the conductance are given. Now, after obtaining all the KCL equation, after converting the current equation in the ratio of V by R, Convert those equation in the matrix form and solve them using Kramer's rule to obtain various node voltage. After node voltage is uh, obtained, we can easily determine all the branch current. So these are the different steps which are going to be followed when we are doing the nodal analysis of the given example given network. Nodal analysis as I told you is very easy as compared to the mass analysis. There is no limitation on the number of unknowns. In the case of mass analysis, uh, there is limitation on the number of unknowns because based on the number of unknowns, we will be having number of equation. Here, there is no limitation on the number of unknowns. Now, let us see one example based on nodal analysis. So, here one network is given, one circuit is given and you have been asked to determine the branch current. The value of the resistance are in ohm. The network consists of two batteries both batteries are having same voltage that is 20 volt. Now, in the nodal analysis, first step is to determine the node voltage. So, first there are three nodes, 1, 2 and 3. So, these are the three nodes. Now, this node is a reference node, the node which is having a zero potential because all the branches are meeting here. And these are the two nodes in which we are interested so now second step is assigning the node names. So suppose the voltages of these two nodes are V and VB. Now applying KVL in each and every node. So first assigning the branch current. So suppose current flowing into this node is I1. Suppose we are assuming the current is I1. Then current coming out is I2 and I3. As I told you, there is no limitation on number of unknowns. If we are taking this as I1, this is I2, then we can take this current as a I3. No need to take I1 minus I2. Now, here, one at VB, one battery is also connected 20 volt. So, suppose we assume that current flowing is inside this node VB. So, suppose this is I4, current at node VB, two currents are coming inside, that is I2 and I4. So, one current will be going outside at node VB and that is nothing but the I5. So, this is a second step we have determined, we have assigned the branch current. Now, you can take I4 in opposite direction also, but you will be getting a 
negative value of the current, but the magnitude will remain same. Now, next step, step one is find V and VB. To find V and VB, we have to apply KVL at node A and node B. So suppose applying KVL at node A. Now, at node A, the incoming current is I1 and outgoing current is I2 and I3. So we can write I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. Now, converting I in terms of voltage and uh, resistance. So we can write I is equal to V by R. Now, I1 is flowing from 20 volt battery to VA node. And current flows from higher potential to the lower potential. So we can write 20 minus VA divided by the value of the resistance that is 1. So I1 is equal to 20 minus VA divided by 1. Now, I2. I2 is flowing from A to B node. That is flowing from VA to VB. And the resistance is 0.5. So we can write I2 is equal to VA minus VB divided by 0.5. And the third current is I3. I3 is flowing from VA to zero potential voltage. So we can write VA minus zero divided by the value of the resistance that is one. So this is how you can convert the current equation in terms of V and R. The point to be remembered here is that, point to be noted here is that you have to consider the direction of current flowing and according to that you have to write the equation of V, uh, equation, uh, equation of V and R. Now, if we solve this equation, we will be getting 20 minus VA is equal to 2 VA minus VB plus VA. And if we finally solve this, we are getting 2 VA minus VB is equal to 10 and the assigning this as a equation number 1. Now, how many uh, equation we will be getting? The equation in nodal analysis depends on the number of nodes. Here, there are two nodes. We will be having two uh, equations, so two unknowns will be there. Now, applying KVL at node B. Now at node B, incoming current are I2 and I4 and outgoing current is I5. So we can write I2 plus I4 is equal to I5. Now converting I2, I4 and I5 in terms of V and R. Now I2 is flowing from VA to VB. So we can write VA minus VB divided by 0.5. I4 is flowing from 20 volt battery to VB. So we can write 20 minus VB divided by 1. And I5 is flowing from VB to zero potential. So we can write VB minus zero divided by two. So this is the equation which we are getting after converting current in terms of voltage and resistance. If we solve this, we'll be getting two VA minus 3.5 VB is equal to minus 20. And this is nothing but the equation number two. And this is equation number one. If we solve this equation by method of elimination or any method, we can get the value of VA is equal to 11 volt and the value of VB is equal to 12 volt. Now, the, we have been asked to determine the branch current. So, I1, I2, I3, I4 and I4 we have to determine. Now, I1 is flowing from 20 to VA. So, we can write I1 is equal to 20 minus VA divided by 1. So, value of VA is 11. So, 20 minus 11 divided by 1 that is 9 ampere. So, I1 is 9 ampere. I2. I2 is flowing from VA to VB. So we can write VA minus VB divide the value of the resistance that is 0.5. And if we solve this, we will be getting minus 2 ampere. I3. I3 is flowing from VA to zero potential. So it will be VA minus zero divided by the value of the resistance that is 1. So 11 minus zero divided by 1 is equal to 11 ampere. I4. I4 is flowing from 20 volt to VB. So 20 minus VB divided by 1. So 20 minus 12 divided by 1, that is 8 ampere. And I5 is flowing from VB to zero potential. So VB minus zero divided by 2. So 12 divided by 2 is equal to 6 ampere. Now, how we can verify the answer which we are getting? Uh, the answer are correct or not? So at node A, I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. So I1 is 9 ampere. And I2 and I3 is minus 2 and 11. The sum of two, these two will be 9 ampere. So the answer which we are getting in node A, I1, I2 and I3 are correct ones. Similarly, I2 and I4, summation of I2 and I4 is 6 ampere and that is nothing but the I5. So the answer which we have got are the correct ones. Now, moving towards example based on delta star transformation. So here, one network is given 
and in this network we have been asked to determine the equivalent resistance between this point and this point now you can see it consists of number of loops it looks like a complex network but it can be easily solved using delta star transformation so first combining these resistances on the right hand and left side so we can say these are the series resistance because there is same current flow through 10 and 5 and same current flow from 5 and 25 ampere so this resistance becomes 15 ohm and this resistance becomes becomes 5 and 25 that is 30 ohm now you can see this is a delta network this is a delta though it is not looking like a delta but it is a delta because it forms a loop so now first step is draw the star over here that is r1 r2 and r3 by dashed line now what is the value of r1 so r1 can be given by product of 5 and 20 divided by sum of 5 20 and 15 that is 100 divided by 40 that is 2.5 ohm similarly r2 can be found by taking the product of 20 and 15 and dividing by sum of resistance so 20 into 15 divided by 40 that is 7.5 ohm similarly r3 is 5 into 15 because r3 is in between 5 and 15 so 5 into 15 divided by sum of the resistance that is 40 so that is 1.875 now here you can see now all these three resistance will be removed that is 5 15 and 20 ohm will be removed so r1 will be in series with 10 ohm r3 will be in series with 2 ohm and r2 will be in series with 30 ohm so the new network r1 is in, r1 and 10 ohm are, are in series so 2.5 plus 10 becomes 12.5 similar r2 and 3 or 30 ohm are in series so it will become 37.5 ohm and R3 and 2 ohm are also in series, so it will become 3.875 ohm. So now new network becomes this one, 15, 20, 20, uh, 12.5, 37.5 and this resistance becomes 3.875. Now again, here one delta is there, you can see. Now writing, uh, drawing the equivalent star over here, so R4, R5 and R6. Now what is the value of R4 in this case? So after converting delta into the star, we can get R4 is equal to product of 37.5 into 3.875 divided by 37.5 plus 3.875 plus 30, that is 71.375. If we solve this, we will be getting 2.04 ohm. So resistance in equivalent star, that is R4 is 2.04 ohm. And R5 is equal to 30 into 37.5 divided by 71.375 and that is nothing but the 15.76 ohm. R6 is equal to product of 3.875 into 30 divided by 71.375 and if we solve this we will be getting 1.63 ohm. Now R4 we can see it is in series with 12.5 ohm. R6 will be series in series with 50 ohm. So the equivalent now equivalent network becomes this you can see over here right hand side network 12.5 and r4 is in series so that becomes 14.15 ohm then 15 and 1.63 is also in series and 30 3.875 and 37.5 resistance are removed and this resistance is nothing but the r5 that is 15.76 ohm now the final network is this now you can see in this network 15 ohm and 1.63 is in series and this series combination is in parallel with 14.54 ohm and this combination is in series with 15.76 ohm. So equivalent resistance between these two terminals is R and that is nothing but the equal to 15 plus 1.63 which is in parallel with 14.54 and this parallel combination is in series with 15.76. So this becomes... Uh, 14.54 into 16.63 divided by 14.54 plus 16.63 plus 15.76 and if we solve this, we will be getting 23.5 ohm. So, resistance, equivalent resistance between these two terminals is 23.5 ohm. So, in the given network, first we convert one delta into the star, then after conversion, again one delta was there, so we convert that delta into the star again and finally, we are getting the result that is 23.5 ohm. So in this video lecture, I have discussed about nodal analysis. One example based on nodal analysis, which are the steps to remember whenever we are doing the nodal analysis. And one example based on delta star transformation. Hope you have enjoyed the video. See you soon in the next video of the DC circuit.
थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग